What's up guys, I am Lee Morse with fstoppers.com and in front of me here is literally my most favorite piece of gear that I currently own right now. This is the Rhino Slider Evo with the brand new arc system attached. In case you didn't see my initial review of the Rhino Slider Evo, let me explain to you what this is. This is a normal camera slider. We can attach a camera right up here. What makes this slider system better than any other slider system that I have ever used is one, the interface of this little controller itself, and two, the fact that the batteries for this unit are built into the controller and built into the ARC unit themselves. So you can charge this up and take it with you and it will work for hours without having to plug it in. I've used so many other sliders in the past that were so cumbersome and confusing to use and set up and also required that I take around a huge battery pack with me all day. It, it was such a pain in the butt. And so when I saw this system, a little handheld controller with a battery built in. This thing is also magnetic and you can just snap it onto the side here. I was just absolutely blown away. And I have to say with the addition of the new Arc, this system is even better than it was before. Now we've had the original Rhino slider for like a year and a half, two years now, and we cannot imagine traveling without it. We use it on every single job that we have. We've had this for about a month or two now and we don't even want to pick up the original Rhino slider because it doesn't have the arc. And we've been able to get really incredible complex looking shots with such a small system here in just a few seconds. You can imagine how difficult, if not impossible, it would be to get one of these shots handheld with a pan head and a manual slider. So now that you have a basic idea of what this is, let me show you how it works. First of all, what I'm going to do is plug in this little micro headphone jack from the controller into the arc system. There's a little on button for the arc here. I'm gonna turn this on. And what I love about this arc system and the way they've made it, there's actually text on the back. Instead of trying to remember what colored blinking lights means, it's just saying not paired. I love it. If you look at the very top above the not paired, it's telling me how much battery life I have left as well inside this unit. Now, the controller is also totally awesome. I love it because it only has two buttons. It has an on and off button, a back button, which is just one button, and then it has this rotator knob that can be clicked as well. Anybody is instantly going to be able to figure this out without reading any manual whatsoever. So I'm going to hold the on button here to turn it on, and uh, you can see it's a color screen, which is awesome. And I'm going to choose which slider I have here. This is the two foot one, so I'm going to just click this middle button here. And I need to first pair the controller to the ARC unit. So I'm gonna go down to settings, ARC, you can see is the second option here, and I'm just going to turn that on. And as you can see, it says paired on the ARC unit also, so there's absolutely no confusion about whether it's working or not. So I'm gonna go back and I'm going to click on live motion here and I will click create a move. The first thing it's going to ask you to do is calibrate. It needs to figure out where it is on this entire slider. So I'm gonna hit go. It's gonna go all the way to the end and it's gonna hit the end and that's how it knows how far the slider is and, and where its position is. So the first thing it's going to ask us to do is choose the arc setting. And by turning this wheel, you can see that I'm turning the camera. And I'm really going to exaggerate this here. I'm gonna set the uh, starting point right here. I'm gonna click the, the button. It's gonna move all the way to the end. And I'm going to choose an out point by turning this all the way to the right here. We could make a much bigger move, but you'll be able to see this. I'm gonna click the button to set out. And this is where it gives us options. How far do you want us to move throughout this process? How quickly do you want us to do it? What's the duration? What is the ramp you want to choose? I'm gonna make this, let's say, a 12 second move. And I will go down to ramp. Ramp means when it gets to the beginning of the end, is it going to instantly start moving at top speed or is it going to ease in and ease out of that motion? I will choose, let's see, we'll do, we'll do two and loop. Do you want it to continue this motion and go back and forward, back and forward? I'm gonna click yes. And then we can click start. And you can see this thing is going to travel to this side. It will then give me the option to begin the movement. I'll click go. 
And this is just going to go backwards and forwards now from side to side until the batteries run out. And what's so awesome is it gives you the percentage done. Obviously, it's not a huge deal for something like this because it's moving relatively quickly. But you can imagine if this was like a 20 minute move, you would love to see what percentage is done at this point. It also gives you the time elapsed here. So if you do a 20 minute move, uh, you can see, okay, 13 minutes are done. The distance traveled, it also tells you that as well because this knows exactly where it is on this slider. Now, under the live motion tab, we could also take control and do this by hand as well. If we go to turn the wheel to slide, we can calibrate it again, just like last time. Again, we're gonna choose where we want the end point to be for the arc. It's gonna move to the other side here. And I will move the camera again to the right just so you can see this movement and I will set the out point. And then it gives me the option to manually move this camera backwards and forwards. So if I turn this, you can see I can move it really quick or I could do a really slow movement. So if you're the type of person that is shooting something like a wedding, this is a fantastic option because now you can be ready for the action to happen, but you don't have to have the camera just going backwards and forwards. You can stop it from moving and say, okay, I just wanna wait right here. And okay, now the, now the action's happening, I wanna get this shot and I need to move quickly. Of course, another huge option for this is going to be time-lapse shooting as well. And if you wanna shoot for minutes at a time or even hours at a time, you can do that in the uh, time-lapse setting. Once again, I'm going to calibrate this. And you can see we have tons of options here to make this time-lapse video. I can go all the way up to 12 hours and uh, you can also set your exposure. And what this allows you to do is then plug in the arc into the camera itself and the Rhino slider will actually stop and give the camera time to take a picture before it moves again so that the, the camera's not actually moving while it's exposing the image. Uh, a lot of sliders that say they're good for time lapses they just move slowly throughout the entire process, but if you're really serious about time-lapse video at long exposure, nothing is going to compete with something that's this easy to use, but still gives you this many options. So as you can see, this slider system is absolutely amazing. If you're used to doing manual moves, you're probably watching this right now saying, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I've been waiting for, and it is. But I have to be perfectly honest and say, it's not perfect either. There's a few little quirks with this that drive me crazy at times. First of all, one issue that I have with this is the fact that you have to have a cable running from the controller to the arc at all. With everything being wireless these days and how incredibly designed this controller is, it seems like they could have built Bluetooth into this and have it be a totally wireless system. Now, if there needs to be a wire anyway, then I would love for there to be a power transfer because one main issue that we have is that the ARC battery seems to die before the controller battery dies. So we will lose the pan feature of the camera before we actually lose the feature of sliding backwards and forwards. And so it seems to me that if we have to have a cable connecting these two units anyway, why not transfer power while you're at it? Now, this leads me to the charging of both of these units. The controller itself comes with a standard AC adapter and we haven't done tests, but it seems to charge in a relatively normal amount of time. The ARC doesn't charge with this unit at all though. Instead, the ARC uses a micro USB cable. And if you're familiar with like these little USB adapters here, if you use one of these small ones, it will take literally over 24 hours to charge this arc up with this little adapter here. You need a much higher powered USB adapter if you wanna get uh, this thing charged up within a few hours. The other issue that we ran into was with some USB chargers, especially these little guys, if you want to use this plugged in, and in many cases we do keep the system plugged in when we're shooting in the studio, this is not powerful enough to keep it on if the battery inside dies. So you're going to have to use a much more powerful uh, USB adapter if you want to power this thing while you use it. Now, I think it would be so much better if we could simply plug in this controller with the AC adapter, and then the power could transfer from this cable all the way to the arc as well. So you just know, okay, I just have to plug in one thing at night when I'm done using it, and then I'll wake up in the morning and the entire thing will be charged. 
It's not quite that easy. You will have to remember to charge both. On a number of occasions, we've gotten on location and realized that somebody has charged the controller, but they have forgotten to charge the arc, or they've turned off the controller and it still has battery, but they forgot to turn off the arc and it might be dead. So that's just a really small issue that I have with this system, but overall, it's still the absolute best slider system that I have ever used. Now let's talk about the price for this unit. It is not cheap. As it sits right here, I believe this unit is right around 1500 bucks with the slider, with the controller, and with the arc head. And I have to say, if you are a videographer, don't even hesitate. This is, like I said, the absolute coolest piece of gear that I own. I can't imagine going to a shoot without this thing now. If you're a casual shooter, definitely think about it. $1,500 is a lot to spend on something that you may not use that often. But I know for every single video shoot that we do now, this is our go-to piece of gear. This is the first thing that we're grabbing if we wanna add motion to our shot. When it comes to the future, I would imagine that Rhino is working on some sort of tilt feature as well, so that we have total control on up, down, left, right, and sliding backwards and forwards motion. I'm very excited to see that if they are working on it, but they haven't told me anything about it. Stay tuned on fstoppers.com. We will make sure to keep you up to date on all of the new gear that they release. And head over to Rhino's website if you wanna check out this slider system and all of the other awesome equipment that they make. <laughs>